Today, what we are going to do is we are going to see how to use Amazon Relational Database Service. So we are going to see how to create a parameter group, how to create an RDS subnet group. In other words, where RDS is going to reside in the network layer. And then we will create an RDS instance itself. Once this is done, we will try to use a web server to interact with our RDS server. We will be we can create some tables and query the tables uh, using SQL commands and uh, we will uh, try, uh, try to insert delete and things like that. So uh, I'm I'm written all the commands in a GitHub article and will share you the link as well. So if you want, you can use the same article or if you're familiar with the SQL, you can write your own commands and try them. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to do all these things in the next few minutes. So I have kept my RDS uh, dashboard open. I also have a multi AC VPC ready and uh, all that is left out is go ahead and start creating the things. So the first thing you uh, want you to do is uh, click on the get started button here or you can click on the instances. So first thing is RDS instances. You can go ahead and do that. But if you do it here, click and launch DB instance. What is going to happen is it is going to take the default parameter group. It is going to take the default uh, subnet group that is in the default VPC it is going to create. So the, 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 uh, instead of doing it this way, what you need to do is go here on the left hand side, you will see a parameter group, click on parameters and then click on create parameter group. This way you will have more control over your database so that the timestamp and all those things. So here I'm going to use the latest version of MySQL, which is MySQL 5.7. And I'm going to say Alexi RDS demo param group. So that's what my description is also going to be. Click on create and you see here there are all default variants are already given for 5.7, 5.6 and MariaDB. So if you want to change something, click on this and you will have a list of parameters that will be there. And remember when we were talking about it in detail yesterday, uh, we saw that timestamp is the most common thing. So you just search for time zone that you have here. The default time zone here is here. And then there will be one more timestamp will be there, which we will be able to edit. So let me click on edit parameters. So now we are uh, editable value. So uh, you don't have to change the default itself. There will be one more time. So let me just go ahead and find that one. So here it is uh, the LC time, so at time names, whether I want it to be in Indian zone or um, French or some other country. So let me see if uh, IN is here. EFGHI, uh, we don't have our own time zone. There are, our time zone can be changed in one more place. Just give me one moment, let me find that one. So there you go. I, I was looking at the long parameter. So if you just type in time underscore zone, it gives you the parameter with all the values. So I'm just going to find out where Asia Calcutta is there so that uh, we can choose an Indian time zone here. So now we have set our, our parameter. So click on save changes. So any database which is using this parameter group will have a time zone as Indian time zone. So we don't have to worry about the transactions being uh, changed because of daylight savings. So the next thing is the subnet groups. In other words, in the network layer, where do we want our uh, database or RDS instance to reside? So here, if you have, it is always good to have a VPC uh, built before you come here so that uh, we can choose the values and do it. So go ahead and click on create DB subnet group. And let us say this is a Galaxy RDS demo uh, subnet. I'm just going to copy that. And it's asking me what is my VPC. I'm going to say RDS demo VPC and then what subnets I want. I don't want to add all the subnets. Uh, uh, so I'm just going to use the private subnets uh, here. So in AZ1A, I will have, uh, okay, the names are not visible. So let us head over to our uh, VPC tab, which I have it open handy. So go to our subnets. And I'm going to search for private, so we will only see the private subnets. So in AZ1, my private is something like uh, 285. I'm just going to uh, copy that uh, from the ID here and go over to my RDS database. And then let me close all these things. These are all not required. 
so 285 that is this one 2854a so that is on the az1 add the subnet come on add does it reflect somewhere else okay it has added everything okay let me remove that i might have accidentally clicked on add all subnets so it seems to have added everything so i just want to add one of them that is this one just going to confirm this once again yeah that is the one and for uh, ac2 this is my private subnet let me go to my rds and choose the appropriate one so ac2 i forgot the name let me put it there so it is this one so add subnet so you see here and the uh, subnets in this group only two of them are there and i have made sure they are the private subnets so the ones that is done click on continue and um, so, uh, when you're starting an instance and if those uh, private subnets are not having any uh, 3306 ports open usually amazon gives you a nice little warning message somewhere along the line uh, to ensure that uh, you don't have problems when you're trying to connect it uh, you see here the status is complete so our subnet group is ready our parameter group is ready so we can go ahead and start creating our rds instance so get back to your instance and click on launch db instance and since we are doing a demo it is good enough that we start with a free tier account when you're going for a customer facing a situation or a production level then you can go ahead and look at all the different options there so these are the currently available engines or database uh, in, um, engines uh, that are available for you in RDS, Aurora, MySQL, MariaDB. You can do any of them uh, if you want uh, as a demo. So in this case, I have written the article and the commands specifically for MySQL and MariaDB. So uh, commands should work on both of them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose MySQL here. And uh, if you want to have only free tier options, just enable this automatically. It will disable all the uh, free tier options. Uh, I mean, disable all the premium options. So, one, uh, but I'm going to enable this to show you something here. So, you see here, MySQL supports a database up to a size of 16 terabytes. But if I choose Amazon Aurora, uh, you can see here uh, the database size is up to 64 terabyte. Uh, that is the biggest database that you can create with Amazon Aurora and you can have multiple read replicas supported by Aurora and there is a premium to be paid for that and as I said if you remember they are completely binary compatible with uh, MySQL 5.6 and Postgres compatible so if you have any database in the MySQL you can uh, move it to Aurora also from on-premise to cloud so let's continue with our demo we are going to choose MySQL click on next and it is asking me what you want to use it for uh, so the pricing and uh, support is going to change based on that you see here yeah, this is the last line for free tier you are going to consider it as a dev test if i'm going to use production or the production aurora i'll be charged extra premium for the support and the performance of it so choose dev test click on next and general purpose license is fine and the latest version 5.7 uh, should be good enough for me and the parameter group also should be good enough for me 5.7 so uh, what is the db instance class let us choose the smallest one for our demo db2 t2 micro i mean db t2 micro and this is again if i want my uh, instance to spread across multiple availability zones as a high availability configuration i will choose this uh, so you know, for demos you should be good enough with the no option itself you don't have to do that uh, once again you can choose any of them uh, for a db uh, T2 micro that doesn't ma make much of a difference. It doesn't improve much of your performance or whatever you're choosing. And but if you are in production level, go ahead and choose the appropriate one for your customer requirement. And once again, you see here there's a minimum of 20 GB and the maximum of 16 terabytes is given. So go ahead and change this as you need it for your clients. So some information about my database itself. What is my database identifier here? In this case, I'm going to uh, call it um, uh, my db inst uh, 01 and i'm just going to call it as uh, db user and password is going to be simple db user uh, pass because this is a demo so we don't uh, worry much about security but uh, when you production make sure that you have uh, enough security and uh, choose a good password which is good enough 
that it is not easy to guess. Coming to network layer, you see here by default, it chooses the default VPC. We don't want that to happen. So choose this and choose the RDS demo VPC. And the subnet group is automatically chosen. If you notice here, Galaxy RDS demo subnet. So if I choose this, you see here it says default. But if I go ahead and change my VPC, this also changes. And do I want this uh, uh, database to be publicly accessible? If you want it, go ahead and click on yes, but we don't need it. So no, it should be fine. An availability zone, let me put it into 1B. Uh, so remember, we are not using a high availability option. So only one instance is going to be created in only one of my VPCs. And it's asking me to need a security group. I'm going to choose a one which is saying existing. That way I can control uh, my security groups. So in this case, I'm going to choose my private security group and default VPC. So all inter VPC communication and private VPC also. So if you don't want it, you can choose it as maximum security as this way also should not be a problem. So uh, it's asking me for a database name. I'm just going to see if uh, any preferences I have mentioned here uh, doesn't look like one. No problem. So let me call this database as uh, students db that is what we are going to call our database and port is 3306 and all the other parameters are automatically picked up i'm just going to copy the snapshots i mean copy the tags to my snapshot and if you want to enable an iam in other words uh, is my ec2 server using iam to connect to my database uh, you need to do this but in this case we are going to use the master username that we created some time back and connect it and quite often in production this option will be used you will create a database for ec2 i mean you will create a role for ec2 and attach uh, rds permissions to that role and for free tier uh, that is a dbt2 micro this is not enabled but if you choose a bigger instance your kms will be definitely enabled so that is about it and backup and retention how often do you want to backup how often you need it to be retained default is seven days and automatically it gets deleted and it goes all the way up to 35 days if you remember when you were discussing the uh, features of rds we saw that by default it keeps it up to 35 days and you want to tell amazon what particular window you want to take a backup you mention it in utc time uh, so you calculate it uh, based on your time zone and update it here. So in most of the cases, Amazon cron jobs and everything runs on UTC time. So let us say no preference in this case. I don't want a detailed monitoring. Uh, that is fine. And maintenance. Do I want Amazon to uh, enable minor version upgrade? No, I don't. I'm not going to do any minor version within the short while. And what is my maintenance window? Do I have a downtime to update this maintenance? Like any minor version packages are to be rolled out, uh, defect fixes. What is my maintenance window? Once again, I can choose uh, the cron job timing. So Monday to Friday, I mean Monday to Sunday and UTC timestamp. So go ahead and choose that if you want your database to be updated automatically. So I'm going to click on launch instance and it has taken my request. So that is, as you can see, your instance may take a few minutes to launch and I'm going to click on view instance details. So the, it is going to do two things. One is it is going to build up a database instance, install the database engine, apply the parameter groups, create the username, create the dummy table, uh, dummy database without any tables. And it is going to take a snapshot immediately after it is successful. Once the snapshot is completed, then the database will be available for us to access. So it is going to take a couple of minutes for this entire activity to get completed. As you can see on my screen, the database uh, instantiation has been complete and it is uh, doing the first backup of my database. So if I go to snapshots, uh, uh, my first snapshot would have been triggered automatically. Uh, we can see the timestamp and confirm that as well. Uh, you can see here the status is creating and progress is about 1% and somewhere the timestamp will be there. There we go. Uh, you can see here it is uh, today's date and the time is also mentioned in UTC timestamp. So it's just getting created. So we should be up and running in a moment. So the next step what we are going to do is we are going to use our web server and connect to our database. So this is, this is the package to install uh, the MySQL uh, binary. If MariaDB is not working, if you're not in Red Hat, if you're in Amazon Linux, just uh, try um, install uh, MySQL. And if you're on Red Hat, usually MariaDB should work. Um, 
by default. So anyway, this is a syntax, uh, example syntax, MySQL hyphen host name, that is my RDS uh, URL, and then the port number, and then the hyphen U is the username, and hyphen P is the password. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this ready in my notepad so that we can fill in the details with my RDS endpoint. So when I say RDS endpoint, uh, it will give you an URL with through which you can access the database itself. So I'm just going to click on that and see if my endpoint is created. Not yet. There we go. There is my this is my endpoint. So I'm just going to take my endpoint and put it into my notepad file here, exactly here. And uh, the port is there is no change 3306. And I created a username called DB user. So hyphen P is the password. You don't have to type it here. It will prompt for you from the command line. So let me head over to my uh, web server. I'm just going to type it and keep it ready. So once my uh, RDS instance comes online in active state, we should be able to start using it. Uh, so it's uh, still finishing up the backup. Okay, there we go. It's, I think it is ready now. It is in available state. So we should be able to connect to it now. So let us head back here, press enter. If my security group is absolutely set up fine, I will get a password prompt. If your security group is not good, you will not get it. You will get most probably a timeout or, uh, or it will be hanging there. So I'm just going to carefully type the password. Okay, there we go. Now we have connected to the database instance now. So how do I know I have connected to my database instance? Remember, I created a uh, database called students DB. So I'm going to type the command saying show databases semicolon. That is a syntax. Databases, I think, uh, show databases. I think it is a plural. Yeah, there you go. The uh, command is in plural show databases and you can see here uh, it has a students DB and I'm going to say use students DB. Let me see if I can pull my screen to the side. I'm just trying to move my uh, window to the right hand side like I usually have. One second. So when I say use uh, students DB, what it is uh, going to do is it is going to select my uh, student DB uh, database and any command that I run will be run against that database. Uh, so it says, as, as you can see here, it says database changed and in the under the students DB, there are no tables right now. So if I go ahead and type or show tables and semicolon, it will say that it is empty. So the first thing that we are going to do now is we are going to create a table uh, with uh, certain columns and values, rows and columns. Um, the same commands are here. You can see here show tables and uh, show max connections just to ensure that you are in the right database. So the first step is, as I said, we are going to create tables here. So here I'm going to create a table called a student table, student ID, last name, first name and city. So these are my going to be my columns for my table now. So I'm just going to, all I'm going to do is just copy this and put it into my um, web server or my MySQL client. And you can see here tables have been created. So if I type show tables now, I will have a table created and it will have a nice view now. And you see here students has been created. And I'm going to say, you can do show select start from tables. It will show null because as of now, there are no records that we just now created. Um, uh, this table itself as of now nothing is there. So I'm what I'm going to do is I'm en enter some records into my table now So I'm going to just copy paste all these uh, records We are going to create uh, four records now So all of them should be getting created so if I'm going to say select star from Students and press enter it will give me a nice little table which says the four records I just now created uh, Mr. Anil is from Singapore, Mr. Reddy is from Hyderabad and there is another N Reddy from Hyderabad and Mr. Vail from Chennai. So there are four records 
and you can do so what we have basically done is we have created a database we have created a table inside it and we have created a record inside it typically these things happen from an application so i'm just doing it from a command line because we don't have a working application so you can insert records in this way also so it is called a crud operation as you can see here create retrieve or read and then update it so we are writing we are reading we are modifying and finally we are going to delete so we have seen the uh, create operation we are going to uh, we did a retrieve by selecting all the tables i mean all the records if i want a particular uh, student uh, with a particular last name as ready so this is how you do that uh, from the database uh, so you can see here i am picking up a student id where the last name is equal to ready so you can see here the student id 2 and 3 has been picked up and it is shown in my table here likewise if i want to pick up both the student id and city where the last name is from uh, our last name is ready then i execute a command something like this select student id city where last name equal to ready and it gives me both the options so that is how you do a retrieve so if you want to make an update uh, um, update operation is cl uh, clearly not written here but uh, it should be the same command you should be able to google it and figure it out uh, uh, on your own should not be a problem at all so in case if i want to uh, do a drop all i have to do is or delete this table all i have to do is drop tables from student db and it will get uh, deleted so let us not do the drop tables right now uh, let us go what other features of rds is there and uh, read through it so i'm just going to try and see and uh, refresh the screen so that uh, if we have the connection showing the db connections is here right it should show uh, my connection uh, as one as of now as of now we have one console which is connected to my database and we should be able to see a spike there which reflects my connection on the screen so the database connections it should reflect here yeah there you go you can see here as of now I, uh, there's only one connection in my database and you and it is maintaining at one uh, connection there so if i go ahead and connect to, from another console this connection will trigger again this is important because uh, from your application is talking to your database there will be multiple connections uh, and you need to know how many connections simultaneously your database can handle what is your cpu utilization uh, what is your uh, read operation iops so this is how you performance tune your application or i or your uh, database and try to find out what is your bottlenecks so what i'm going to do is i'm going to trigger a manual snapshot for my database now so the how i will do is i have already selected my instance under instance i am under my instance so click on actions and i'm going to uh, click on take a snapshot so it's going to ask me uh, what is the name of my snapshot i'm going to say this is as a four row snapshot i will tell you why it is a four row snapshot later let us call it four row snapshot okay it should not st so now you'll understand why it is four rows So my database uh, snapshot is getting triggered. It has a table inside it and it has four rows inside it. So this is a point in time database. So uh, the data which was at that moment, a backup is uh, getting uh, taken uh, there. So once it, this is completed and uh, if I go ahead and change something in my database, what is going to happen is uh, the change uh, will not get reflected. If I am going to restore this snapshot and create another database, uh, I will be getting only four rows there. So we'll see that in a short while. I'm just waiting for uh, the snapshot itself to get completed. It just takes about a minute or two for uh, the snapshot to get completed. As you can see here, uh, my snapshot is completed and it is ready and available for use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to insert one more record in my database. I'm just going to insert a Martian. You can see here the student name is a Martian here. Let's just go ahead and insert this guy. So if I go ahead and say select star from tables, uh, I should be able to see five records now. As you can see here, there are five records in the set and there is a Martian now. So my active database have five records. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to restore my uh, or create another database from my snapshot and see how many data are actually are there in my snapshot so click on this and then click on snapshot actions and i'm going to say restore snapshot 
So it is going to pick up some of the default values from the snapshot itself and it is going to be pre-populated and allow me to change certain things. So you can see here the MySQL engine, the database version, multi-AZ deployment and all those things are already created for me. So I'm just going to leave them as it is. And I'm just going to say DB instance from snapshot with four rows. So that's a descriptive name, that's okay. You can see here the VPC is also selected and the public availability and the AC preference. In this case, I'm going to put it in 1A. Just going to confirm where is the previous one. See here the previous ones are, these are the snapshots, right? And let me go to instance. They should also be in the same availability zone. Let me select this guy. And if I scroll down to the network level parameters, you can see here it is also in availability zone 1B. So I'm going to restore my snapshot in 1A and leave the rest of all the fields as uh, my, uh, the default ones. So this is also going to take the same amount of time. It is going to create the snap uh, database and it is going to uh, take another snapshot uh, that is an automated snapshot from this database also. So it is doing the background processing, all those things. So while this is uh, my database is getting restored, I'm going to show you how to create a read replica because sometimes uh, your applications need to access your database only to read information, not to write it. So to improve the performance of your database, what people do is they create a read replica and uh, whenever the query is a read query, they automatically uh, send that query to a different database. So to configure something like that in RDS, what you do is uh, Select this primary instance, my DB instance 01, and under instance actions, uh, you can see here there is something called a create a read replica. So once again, uh, it's, uh, this is where the interesting part happens. Uh, I can create a read replica and uh, completely move it to another uh, region so that uh, uh, sync, uh, asynchronous copy can, I mean, synchronous copy can happen if across the regions. No. I can copy it to a different region with a time delay and then you can use it for a higher performance also. So as of now, let us stay with the Mumbai itself. And because we have a subnet security group and everything set up, so it's easy to show it. So I'm going to put uh, my read replica also in 1A in this case. And it's going to be having the same performance level. And I'm just going to say DB inst 01 read replica. Or I'm just going to change this a little bit DB and read replica DB read replica instance 01. So this way that makes more sense. So go ahead and click on read replica. So you see, you can see here it says modifying on my primary database also. The reason is whenever a new data is coming here, it needs to copy the data to my read replica also. So there are some additional changes to be done on my primary database also. So that is why you are seeing a modifying state here as well. So it's uh, my both my databases are getting created. So it's going to wait for a while. As you can see on my screen, uh, my database from my snapshot is available. So we should be able to get to the endpoint and connect to it. Uh, before doing that, I'm just going to quickly check uh, what is my security group. And if there is any problem with my security group, I need to modify that and ensure that I'm able to uh, have the ports open. So I'm just going to click on modify and see if it allows me to change my security group dynamically here. So here uh, you see here um, I forgot to change this I believe in the last time so I'm just going to remove this default security group and add my uh, private security group here and then click on continue and then modify database instance. So I'm just going to apply immediately. There are certain changes which will require a reboot and certain changes which will not require a reboot. So if you want to if there are uh, Updates which require a downtime, then you use this option. But if you're sure that it doesn't require a downtime, then you choose this and apply immediately. So I'm just going to apply that and uh, just going to go back and see if the changes has been immediately taken into effect. So let me refresh my screen. 
so it says modifying so that means it is going to take a while for uh, the security group uh, to take into effect so my network change has been taken into effect the database is available now so i'm just going to take this endpoint and put it into my syntax to connect uh, so if it is not there already i'm just going to ensure that so connect copy this and let us connect it from another window so the first one let us say the first tab is the master server the second one is going to be my snapshot so i'm just going to rename this so call this rds snapshot so i'm just going to say show databases and then use students db clear the screen i think that won't work okay so i'm going to say select star from students i hope i got the spelling right So you see here there are only four rows here this is the point i wanted to uh, show you guys if you take a snapshot it is going to be only point in time any changes we made on the production will not get replicated if you wanted to have a replication then you need to go ahead and have a read replica copy so that the data will be replicated across the servers so if you see here on the production let me rename this uh, let us say rds let us call this as master and if i just up arrow from start from students you have five records whereas my snapshot which was taken after the last record was updated or before the last record was updated i get only four records likewise let me go ahead and connect my read replica so my read replica server is also online i believe let me go ahead and take the end point and i'm just going to ensure the security group is fine here okay great let me just copy this end point and put it here so copy this guy and let us create another terminal and let us call this uh, terminal as uh, read replica copy paste you can see here i have connected to my read replica instance put in my tb password and if i say select uh, of course uh, i have to use the correct database use uh, students db and then select star from students Okay, students db, right? Okay, let me, uh, this is why I do everything by order, show databases. Okay, it's a small S, capital S is not working. Okay, select star from students. We should have five records here. So that is how your read replica works. If I go ahead and update it and automatically we should have the same record in uh, the other instance also. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to see if I can record, uh, insert one more record. So I'm just going to copy this into my notepad and quickly add the values. Like we are going to add a sixth student and call him Venus. That is student last name and first name. So, that should do. Let me insert it in the master. Let us in real time uh, go ahead and see how much time it takes uh, for the record to get replicated. So, we have six records in my master and I'm just going to go ahead and execute this in my 
rig replica and there you go you have the six student also available but you see here this is the read replica so what do you think it will happen if i try to insert another one here let us say another student is uh, from uh, jupiter jupiter did i spell it right i hope it is the right spelling i'm just going to say seven and i'm going to do an insert record from my read replica so you see here it gives me a nice friendly message saying this mysql server is running with a read only option so it cannot execute this command in other words using read replica you cannot write to the database you can only read from the database you can't even delete anything you cannot modify anything just updating so in case if you want to push this read replica into a master itself then what you can do is you can go to uh, instance actions and this promote read replica and automatically once you click on this action amazon will uh, initiate an app option so do you want to do enable automatic backups because this is going to be different database it is going to have its own backup window and preferences so i'm just going to say i don't want any automated backup just click on continue and promote read replica so it is going to do its a background processing uh, and then make sure that it is a completely different database from an old one so that there is no linkage between the master and my read replica and it behaves completely as a different database now so this is how uh, rds works and you can see here there are two connections uh, because the read replica is also con contacting this database uh, my master database and replicating it once this modifying action is complete we should be uh, seeing a drop in this connection as well in the short while uh, I am showing the graph of my uh, master database connection. You see here initially there was one connection and we created a read replica. So it automatically jumped to two connections. And recently I promoted my read replica. In other words, broke the linkage between my master. So it has dropped back to one connection. So if I go back and execute a command, say drop tables or uh, update tables uh, in my read replica server, we should be able to successfully do that. So I'm just going to do an insert record now. And you see here one record was inserted. If I do a select star from tables, uh, we should be able to get all the seven records here. You can see here there is Venus and a faulty Jupiter is also there. So let me just go ahead and try and drop my tables also. Let us see what happens. You can see here that all the tables are uh, I mean query is okay and uh, the table has been dropped so if I execute select star from tables it is going to give me an error saying there is nothing called the students uh, table there so this is an individually separate database nothing to do with my master and my master is still running and uh, if you go ahead and select star from students it has its six records up to Venus and it lives separately from my uh, read replica copy now so that is all that is there to see in RDS. Uh, we saw how to create a master database. We saw how to create a snapshot. We saw how to restore a snapshot. We saw how to create a read replica and connect to the read replica, retrieve data and promote the read replica itself. So it behaves like a standalone copy or standalone database and then read and write records to it. In fact, delete records from it. So we are looking at a DynamoDB console for Mumbai region now and the first thing that you do is create a table uh, or where the collection is going to be stored. So you can see here my default capacity is there about five units of read and write. So you can choose whichever read uh, capacity you need when you are provisioning the table itself. So let us go ahead and create a table and I'm going to follow this article to the T so that we don't make any mistakes and we complete it smoothly. So uh, when you're creating a table, it is going to ask me what is going to be my table name and it is going to ask me what is going to be my partition key. So I'm going to use the same thing that is mentioned here. So it makes it easier to copy paste some of the commands. So the table name is going to be my AWS students and my primary key is uh, OK. Looks like I have already a table with that name. Let me just go ahead and see if I can delete that uh, already existing table. OK, delete all CloudWatch metrics. Yeah. That is fine with me. Go ahead and delete it. So my table is deleted. So we'll just go ahead and create the same table again. AWS students and partition uh, key is going to be my student ID. That is, in other words, I'm going to give an ID for each and every student so I can recollect them. And it is string. Just leave it as a string. 
and don't choose the add sort key or anything i don't need a sort key probably what you can do is a student name or student age or student class something like that you can have a sort key but in this case let us uh, do nothing use the default settings and uh, you see here under default settings it says uh, the capacity is set to five reads and five writes if you don't want that if you want more than that then you go ahead and edit it and then choose the appropriate one and then you will be charged uh, more for that so the minimum is here and then the maximum that you can provision is here so choose appropriately what you need so for a demo purpose for learning you can do this on uh, default settings click on create that is all that is there in dynamo db to be done uh, so you have created our table and it almost instantaneously gets created there is not uh, like a snapshot uh, there is not uh, like a security group a lot of things to be done here and under items if i go here this is where my data is going to be stored so as of now i don't have any items in my uh, student uh, collections and if i go to my metrics nothing will be there because it's a new database there is nothing happening and read capacities the provision is five i have not consumed anything so you can just go ahead and see all of them nothing will be there here there is no alarm config i mean the alarm is there there is nothing to trigger an alarm so insufficient data and capacity is five here go ahead and modify this if you want to and i have not created any index remember we just created students id and then there are no secondary indexes we mentioned so this is also empty so what i'm going to do is create some records so for creating a record i'm going to back to my uh, article and you see here there's a fine print here you will need an ec2 client with aws cla configured to run the below commands i already have a linux server with uh, the access key and secure key installed so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use that uh, client to do uh, run com these commands so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy paste these four lines what it's going to do is it is going to create four files or four JSON records locally in my Linux machine student 01 02 03 04 with the necessary fields and tag values and everything so I'm just going to create it and insert these four records into my server now so if I clear my screen and do an ls -L, you, you will see here there are four records I'm going to just open one of them and show you uh, what they contain and you see here under student number two the student id that is a string and value of two is mentioned and under student details i have this value because it's a collection under student details i can add how many hours i want this is also once again it's a string i have given name age sex you can have location you can have marks you can have grade everything you want so there are four records are there, but these are in my local machine, not yet on my Dynamo TV. So if I go to Dynamo TV now and hit on refresh also, you can see here there are there's nothing, no records are available here. So I need to push these records to my cloud. So I'm just going to do is run these commands here on my console. So all these four records will get inserted. okay <clears throat> looks like i did not mention my region so it is uh, giving me an error saying you must specify a region <clears throat> when you're doing aws configure so let me just quickly do that so when we try to upload the records it said that i did not have my region configured so i just updated my region in my aws uh, credentials so let me try to insert them once again and you can see here it is uh, inserting all the records here so the capacity that i'm using is only one capacity because it is a very small record if i'm writing more than uh, say 5 kb uh, the amount of capacity i will be using will be more than one here so there are four records inserted if i go back to my uh, dynamo db items and refresh my screen here it will have those four records so you can see here record one two three four all of them are there so in case if you want to retrieve them all i have to do is uh, let us say retrieve a student of uh, id3 here this is what this record means uh, so i'm just going to copy that and it will get me the record of old mike so let me go ahead and run that on my screen let me just zoom out a little bit paste it and you can see here this is my item and my student ID is three and my uh, student uh, details are their name, old mic and age is 881 and sex is empty. 
So obviously this age has been entered incorrectly when I typed in my record and obviously the sixes values also missing. So let us go ahead and update those two values in my collection. So that is what I'm going to do here. Since old Mac age is in updated incorrectly, let us go ahead and correct it. So I'm going to create another record uh, locally. In other words, uh, I'm going to create another JSON file locally and I'm going to update it. Or in other words, use the put item, Dynamo TV, put item and table. So we have updated it and we can do the same thing online also if i come here online and click on uh, this let, i have not refreshed it let me click on this and see what happens when i pull this record so it is just pulling old record let me refresh my screen again and you see here it got updated with the latest details and if i see here it uh, allows me to edit it online also if i want to edit it or insert or add more items i can edit this item here and click on save this will get edited here so like for example uh, um, let's not to do it let us not spend time here let us go ahead and do our other stuff we have so much to do so final one is uh, let us say i want to delete old mike he's no longer a student of mine all i have to do is uh, do dynamo tv delete item uh, so if we do something like this in our console you should be able to delete it also and if I go back to my Dynamo TV and refresh my screen, uh, the old uh, my ID should not be there anymore. So only student records one and uh, two and four are there and the other record is gone. So if I go to my capacity, uh, not capacity metrics, uh, that might be a sp spike of uh, the capacity that I was using. So let us see, it is already picked up those values and reflecting on my screen now. So you see here, there's a very tiny line at the bottom. I have not really used my full capacity. It just shows that because it is, it slowly gets accumulated. My capacity gets accumulated over a period of time and I have not used to my full capacity so far. So it just says that I'm using very, very limited amount of my capacity here. So that is it from me, um, RDS and DynamoDB.